This is Joe Masabla with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at the Dallas Center. It's uh, early June. Uh, we haven't hit the highest temperatures yet, but uh, that is coming soon. And another month is going to be in the hundreds. And depending on the year, we may not get a lot, a lot of rain. So what to expect uh, in terms of stress in the garden uh, late in the season? And that's what we will be covering today, focusing specifically on water and mite stress. I got this picture uh, online. Uh, all the other pictures are mine, except for this one. I found online because I wanted to show you what the average person thinks uh, when they uh, uh, when they hear about water stress. They think of um, uh, wilted leaves. But in reality, plants uh, have as many various responses to uh, water stress as many as there are different types uh, of plants. This is okra. <laughs> uh, a few years ago, I had okra planting, and uh, I guess I forgot the irrigation for a week. It dropped a lot of leaves. But turn on the back the irrigation and it uh, started growing again. <clears throat> okra is very adapted to southern climate. Uh, it can, it's not going to wilt. You're never going to see wilted leaves. It's just going to suddenly uh, turn yellow and drop. But the, the core of the plant will still be alive and, and it will respond fast to any rain <coughs> or irrigation. Here are two uh, sunflower uh, varieties that I have planted. One does not, uh, a lot more, the one on the left is a lot more sensitive to uh, drought or poor irrigation, while the one on the right uh, uh, tolerates, uh, you, know, you know, drought and it's doing very well. I mean, it's like five, six foot tall already. This is a current picture. This is my sweet potato in the greenhouse, and you see here some uh, wilting, the typical uh, drought response in terms of wilting. Uh, but uh, you'll never see yellowing, you'll never see a leaf drop. A sweet potato is very tolerant to extended uh, season, extended drought uh, conditions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, my grapevine, uh, which is in the greenhouse also, it seems like in, in one week, all the leaves turned bleached uh, yellow. And so some of the older leaves did not make it. They're going to continue turning brown and falling off and fall off, well, while the youngest leaves um, are starting to get some color back, uh, green coloring back and uh, new shoots uh, coming. Uh, turmeric, uh, I noticed, I'm new to growing turmeric, I noticed some leaf edging, uh, you know, browning and drying off. And same thing with the uh, ginger, uh, sometimes the whole shoot uh, dries down to the ground, but then a new shoot comes back. So like I said, different plants respond to different, uh, differently to drought stress. Of course, I'm not covering at all ornamentals or shrubs or trees. That's not my specialty. I'm just showing you what I have. Now, interestingly, uh, my experience with pepper, tomato, eggplants also, is that they don't show any wilting. They don't show any signs. You just see flower drop. The plant's there. The, it makes flowers and then aborts all the flowers. That's why I'm never growing peppers in a container anymore unless I have drip irrigation and automatic timer because the plants does never give you a visual signs that it's uh, stressed except uh, aborting all the flowers and by then it is too late. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, cr a fruit cracking in tomato is a typical uh, response to uh, extended uh, uh, drought uh, or long time between irrigations. What happens is that the skin becomes hard like a plastic bag and then next time you irrigate or it rains, uh, the fruit absorbs a lot of water but it cannot expand because that skin cover became thickened and hardened and then you know it's like a balloon ex exploding from too much pressure 
So uh, that is uh, never a sign of severe water stress. This is just even a mild water stress or uh, uh, can cause something like this. So very easy to fix, just uh, shorten the time between irrigation. If you're watering but every three days, maybe switch to every day uh, watering. Switching to mite, uh, last year uh, we had a severe uh, drought, uh, extended drought. I was watering a half hour, twice a day, every day with the drip irrigation. Uh, so the plants were doing fine. What I missed is uh, controlling for mites. And it seems like within a week or 10 days, the plant collapsed. Here are some of the symptoms, early symptoms of mite damage on my uh, squashes and zucchini. Uh, these are early symptoms. You start seeing here early symptoms um, uh, with the, on the tomatoes. Here they they were doing fine, but then uh, it seems like in two weeks uh, total collapse. Uh, a total collapse. Now interestingly, the squash were uh, you see here uh, more severe damage with the mites on the squash than the, the slides I showed you previously but right here I have cantaloupes growing on a trellis and they were fine they did not have any mite uh, pressure at all looks like they like squash they don't care for basil they didn't bother the peppers that you see here but they love squash and they love tomato and uh, right here on the edge of the garden uh, you know like on the left side of the squash I had uh, kabocha which is like a green pumpkin, a Japanese variety, you know, growing on a trellis, and that uh, was severely damaged. So, uh, so this kabocha is on the right side of the squash, if you can see my pointer. So severe damage, uh, the mites love the kabochas, uh, love the squash, f ignored the uh, uh, cantaloupes, ignored the basil and pepper, and then jumped and loved the tomatoes. So keep, keep that in mind, maybe a pepper or a basil plant is not a uh, cue for you to watch for early signs of mites, but tomato or kabocha or cantaloupe or, I'm sorry, or other squashes uh, are better indicators for early mite infestation. I've grown uh, strawberries in the past and here's in the field. You, you don't see this closely, but a leaf like this uh, is uh, uh, completely covered with webbing uh, that uh, comes with the severe mite infestation. And the poor growth, uh, fruit drop, uh, fruit uh, damage uh, all over. Even in a high tunnel where the plants were doing a little bit better, uh, eventually got infested with mites. Of course, we did see uh, some varieties uh, of uh, strawberries more tolerant to mite than others. So what do you do? Well, of course, uh, with water stress, add more water. So uh, do not water by hand. You can, you can overdo it. You're wasting water. I'm a big proponent of irrigation. So get a timer, get a, you know, uh, get a timer and set it on the timer so that you can and drip irrigation so that you can uh, even if you're traveling or not uh, busy uh, don't have the time to stand in the garden to water manually uh, you can set a timer and water and take care of your scheduling just like i did i showed you i'm watering uh, you know on a timer uh, 30 minutes this last year when we had severe drought 30 minutes uh, every day, twice a day. Uh, one uh, tool you can use is uh, use something like this, which is called tensiometer, which is, you know, like an expensive toy. This is about $80 nowadays. Um, basically, it's a stick you put in the ground, has a, has a porous stone at the bottom, you fill it with water, and then when the soil is dry, it, the water comes out from the inside of the tube to the outside sucked in by the dry soil and then creates a vacuum and this gauge gives you a reading. So the, uh, the gauge is below 20, you don't have to irrigate, above 20, time to turn on the irrigation. So if you want to be 
you know, play with the big leagues, do do the job right. You can uh, get uh, like this this way. There's no uh, guessing on when to start uh, watering. Uh, of course, there's lots of twenty dollar, five dollar, twenty five dollar uh, soil moisture probes. Those are uh, good too, uh, but nothing li like this uh, commercial grade. Okay. In terms of mite, how do you control spider mites? Well, spider mites hate water. If uh, in a year that we have normal water or too much water, what, uh, spider mites are never an issue. They, uh, spider mites are an issue if uh, in a dry year. Okay, so water plants. Um, okay, um, you know many. Uh, again, I'm not a vegetable specialist. I got this from. Uh, uh, IPM with the uh, University of uh, California. They had some uh, information on how to control uh, spider mites. Um, and again, you know, they mentioned that most woody plants can tolerate low to moderate mite uh, population and natural enemies are often. So maybe no worries about bushes or woody ornamentals. But uh, uh, if you want to use an insecticide, well, it should be remember, mite is not an insect, so you should be looking for a miticide, okay, or something that specifically control mites, like it will clearly say on the label. A good choice is an insecticidal soap, which is oil and soap. You can buy it pre-made. It's called insecticidal soap, neem oil, horticultural oil. All season oil are all examples. Those work well because the oil uh, suffocates the mites and kills them, but multiple applications uh, are, are necessary. Okay. Now remember, if you spray uh, insecticide like seven too often, you're killing the natural predators and then you have explosion of uh, spider mites. So even in, a, even in an average rainfall years that spider mites are not expected to become a serious problem, if you are spraying uh, seven or any, uh, you know, um, pyrethroid or carbaryl, carbaryl for example is like seven, then you better watch out for uh, mite uh, exp uh, population explosion. And here is my recipe of what I use when I want to make my insecticidal soap. Here is uh, uh, liquid hand soap, and this is the cheapest uh, olive oil. I prefer olive oil instead of regular soap. That's what I was taught, and that's what I've been using. And here is my recipe for a for a five for a three gallon uh, backpack sprayer. I would put four teaspoons of soap and two teaspoons of oil. Okay, mix them and then spray them and then spray again every five to seven days because it uh, wears out quickly, it doesn't stay long, and for mites, multiple applications are necessary. For water stress, you have to water well. Basically, increase your watering time and decrease your watering frequency. I usually start uh, 30, this time of year, maybe 30 minutes every third day, then it becomes 30 minutes every two days, then, then every 30 minutes every day, and then in July, August, sometimes I'm doing uh, 30 minutes twice a day, every day, okay? Uh, drip emitters are better. Uh, add mulch if you can. Uh, if you you know if you grow in big plants like tomatoes, that will conserve uh, the soil moisture. And of course, uh, switching from a high water demanding uh, crop uh, like tomato uh, to something like watermelon or okra. Okay, that's always uh, the easiest option. Um, I don't, i big proponent of drip irrigation, but hey, sometimes you have to use uh, overhead sprinkler to uh, cool the air around the plants and mostly to um, uh, keep the foliage moist so that uh, uh, you help reduce uh, mite infestation. So here is my sprinkler and uh, it filled five gallon in one minute. So I'm, I'm spraying five gallons per minute, and if I run it for 10 minutes, that's 50 gallons, and it covers an area of 517 square feet. You do the math, uh, gallons per square feet, how much is equivalent for uh, acre inch. I'm spraying uh, for that 10 minutes the equivalent of uh, as if it rained uh, uh, 0.15 inches of rain. 
that is uh, even if I do that daily that is uh, not uh, gonna add too much water to cause any foliar fungal diseases or bacterial diseases uh, of course I don't do this daily it's just maybe every other day or every third day um, but again uh, I'm still using 50 gallons of water each time so you will have to find the balance uh, um, do I want to spray uh, something for mites or should I wet the foliage and use water you decide uh, which is more economical for you okay uh, of course uh, get a um, you know timer get a, a good quality uh, fertilizer injector like I have here for my vegetable garden at the Dallas Center then uh, you know the plants are uh, will never be water stressed uh, and show any signs but for homeowner I know everybody loves to use a soaker hose I don't like them because if you forget to use a pressure leg regulator like I did a few years ago uh, the 40 psi pressure you get uh, from the you know garden hose from the garden faucet uh, can bust your uh, soaker hose so you want to use a soaker hose you get a pressure regulator okay and uh, these are general rule for irrigation best management practices uh, you know water well water long time so the water reaches deep and then the roots will follow uh, the water where they are deep this way they are not concentrated on the irrigation surface on the on the surface of the soil and that means they can dry out fast okay um, if you want to judge the water requirement uh, whether to water or not do that in the morning because in the afternoon if the plants are wilted that could be temporary stress but then overnight they recover but if they look wilted in the morning time to irrigate um, water slowly for better absorption so definitely uh, drip irrigation is great for that instead of flood irrigation okay don't water on rainy days uh, water very early in the morning or late at night this way you don't lose water uh, from evaporation add mulch like we talked before um, you know and uh, try to uh, avoid causing runoff and check your irrigation system monthly so with, for example the soaker hose is not busted the irrigation sprinkler is not busted uh, the timer is on uh, running properly uh, all that uh, it can be done it can be fixed uh, you just have to uh, keep at it this uh, stop the video and uh, copy these resources and studying the acronym resources uh, and uh, uh, have fun gardening that's the best way to learn and to keep getting better at it thank you very much